continue the ride. Welcome friends, welcome friends, welcome one and all. Blair Ballard, the bon vivant very much at your service. I do hope that you're all in fine form. Now, if you watch the channel regularly, you know I'm a bit of a car nut, especially when it comes to James Bond cars. You may have seen me herring around in an Aston Martin DBS, or possibly a Lotus Esprit Turbo or two, even the rather wonderful and venerable Citroen 2CV from For Your Eyes Only. I love my cars. And that's why we're here today, because we're at the Goodwood Festival of Speed auction sale set up by Bonhams. Now, if you don't know about uh, the Festival of Speed, it's set up, in fact, oh, many, many years ago by a total petrol head uh, called the Duke of Richmond and Lennox. Now, he owns this amazing estate here in West Sussex, just in the south of England, just outside Chichester. He runs many events during the sporting year, including the Goodwood Revival, where they do lots of pre-war cars and everyone gets dressed up. But this is the Festival of Speed, and they do absolutely everything for the petrol head. You've got uh, a forest stage, rally stage you can go and look at. They've got a Formula One pit lane. They've got a supercar paddock. They've got a concourse event for cars, a bit like these ones here. And they've got an absolutely unmissable hill climb where the fastest drivers from around the world drive the fastest cars around the world up a specific hill climb past the flint wall to see if you can get the fastest time in the week. Basically, if you want to see one motoring, motoring event in the year, this is the one to go for. It's the best celebration for petroheads around the world. Make the pilgrimage as and when you can. But running at the same time, Bonhams do a Festival of Speed auction sale where they have some rather tasty equipment and cars up for grabs and we're here because there are two or three bond related cars that we think you'll find absolutely amazing let's go and check them out right now right guys i'm here with tim schofield who's the overall head of bonhams motor cars uk and you're kind of responsible for what's going on today and well happening on friday in fact aren't you uh, pretty much so yeah yeah we've got um i mean this is our who are we're into our 20 plus year of holding a sale at the festival of speed uh, we're at the back of the Duke's house um, on the private lawns. Uh, to, to gain access to the Bonhams auction, you have to go through uh, the Duke's front door, um, which could be a bit daunting for some people, but <laughs> it's, 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 it does work. You can get here that way. Uh, and yeah, we've got a sale, a traditional sale, which is Friday morning with automobilia. There's about 200 lots of collectibles. And then the main event for us and for my department is circa 80 motor cars that we're selling at two o'clock in the afternoon. And I've been looking around. We're going to have a look around later on, guys, as well. But there are some incredible cars. You've got Formula One cars. You've got, I mean, there's a DeLorean. We've got an, an XJ220. I want to have a poke around later on as well. But quite a few Aston Martins. Yep. Is, that, is there a reason that there, there are, there's a, I mean, it's, it's amazing because there's quite a, a variety. You've got Vanquishes. You've got V8s. They've got an old DBS from 1970. Well, the earliest car is the 31 uh, one and a half litre Le Mans. Uh, with a works body, um, so it's one of four were built with a works body, uh -huh. um, and that car has got period competition history at Brooklands in 32 and 33. Um, it's been with the current owner on and off. It was his father's car in 1950. Uh -huh. Then his father sold it, and then his father bought it back for his son as a gift, and the son's had it for 60 years. But it's up for up on going under the hammer. It's going under the hammer. Estimate three to five hundred thousand. For that. Wow, and it, and it's lovely. It's just it, it, it's it's untouched. It's got a unique Batelli body on, which is mirrored on the hundred mile an hour um, low chassis Invictors at the time. Uh -huh. Said I want my car to look a bit like that, please, and that's what Batelli did, and that's what gives it its unique sort of features. Because there's an Invicta as well, isn't there? Isn't there? Isn't we have a we have the, a standard uh, low chassis Invicta, one of 70, 75 that were made. Um, wow. uh, yeah, uh, but as you, you, the question you raised about Aston Martins. We, we traditionally do, did used to do a sale purely of Aston Martins at the factory. Uh -huh. uh, we did it for about 20, 21 years. I put Newport years. Pagnell. Uh -huh. I put Newport Pagnell. 
Um, and, and because of room and space and, and, and other things, that ceased to become an annual event. Um, we still have close ties with the Aston Martin Owners Club and Aston Martin Heritage, etc. And mm -hmm. obviously because of all that, we have a good reputation, a great reputation for selling Aston Martins. And that's why we've probably got well over a dozen um, Astons in the sale today. Out of the 75, 80 cars in the auction, they represent a sort of a higher proportion. Well, I mean, they're in beautiful condition as well. I mean, absolutely stunning examples, but that leads us to why we are here because, I mean, Bonhams has got quite a long history of, with, with the Bond, the world of James Bond. I mean, back in 2018, you sold the DB5 that was Gold used Night by Piers, you know, the Gold, yeah, GoldenEye DB, that Piers Brosnan drove in, DB, uh, in, uh, in GoldenEye, which also went with a sister car to the, one of the cars we're looking at next. But the star of the show potentially? Uh, potentially. Yeah. For, our, for, our, for yeah. our Bond fans would be this car yep. here. Can you talk us about, tell us about this DBS Superleggera? Um, driven by 007, but not the 007 as we now know. Exactly. Um, obviously, Naomi drove this uh, in the most recent film, uh, No Time to Die. Um, the production company didn't have a Superleggera DBS um, available to them, so had to go to Aston Martin to see if they could go to one of their key customers that owned one of the cars mm -hmm. to ask and beg and steal and borrow if we could, if we could use it. Yep. Um, and that's what happened. So they went to a very good client of theirs, a good buyer of their um, up-to-date modern motor cars, mm -hmm. um, who was happy uh, to lend it to them. Um, clearly, nobody saw COVID on the horizon. It did mean that he had to, he kind of said goodbye to the car for nearly two years. Two years? Because they wanted it potentially for continuity, issues, if uh -huh. they had to do some bit of refilming, etc. Um, during the COVID period. Um, it was then used, I mean, obviously it's, it's used in a few scenes yep. um, in the film. I think Norway was the depicted area, but in fact, out, uh, Scotland yep. made up for Norway. Mm -hmm. Uh, an RAF Bryce Norton made up for a secret airbase somewhere with a Hercules. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yes, it, it was Bond's ride. Um, Bond gets picked up after that famous chase where I think he's in a, a, a Toyota or Hilux yeah, or something that's being right, chased yeah. down. Current turn, I don't think I'd done many miles if 20 or 30 when he said, there you are, you can borrow it. I think I've done more miles in this car <laughs> than, than Paul the owner has, in fairness, with some of the uh, some of the pre-publicity work that we've done on with the car over the last month. Sure. Um, so 800, 850 miles is all it's covered. I think it's had two services in that time, so it's been nicely serviced. Sure. But yeah, there's some lovely little touches on it because clearly it wasn't a car that was full of gadgets, um, but neither were some of the other cars that we have been blessed with selling over the years. I mean, sure. we mentioned that. We mentioned one of the cars, I think, in 2020 was the Honor Majesty's Secret Service yes. uh, Mercury Cougar convertible, which the was Dyna driven Ray by Dyna Ray, that was, that's right, yeah, that's yeah. right, Tracy, uh -huh. Countess Tracy, uh, with George Lazenby, of course, and that, that looked great because it had the ski rack and the, and the, and the star skis on the, on the boot lid. Yeah. Um, but this looks obviously very stock and standard, um, great colour combination, actually. And the, it's nicely the colours, spec, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, well, the colours pop when it's outside. Obviously, we're in our marquee and apologies for the noise and the, the fact that we don't look particularly well dressed, be it myself, um, <laughs> uh, and our cars, because we're still in the throes of setting up the sale today, uh, with viewing taking place tomorrow. Um, but apart from a few little touches, which I know you, we will highlight and look at, but the sill plaques and, uh, and the final inspection by Daniel Craig are some nice touches. You also get a, a nice letter certificate from Aston Martin saying where it was used, what scenes it was used, and when it was used, etc. Fantastic. Well, look, let's have a look now. Is the, is the plaque on this, this side on or both. Is on, on both? On both sides. Oh, yes. Why, you... why don't you buy one, get another <laughs> one. For... You come around here, Gavin. We can have a look down here. Now, look, this is a car um, featured in No Time to Die, one of one, the DBS down here. It's a lovely little plaque for whoever is lucky enough to, to have the winning bid. In Friday's sale, it's a really nice, I mean, it's not even run in. I mean, 850 miles on the clock, that is not run in. Let me lift, reach over here as well, because you'll see this as well. This is um, actually a certificate from Aston Martin um, saying Aston Martin would like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, this, the, the current owner granting permission to feature his Aston Martin DBS Superleggera in no time to die. So this is your certificate you can have on your wall in your garage to say that this is your, your Bond Aston Martin. I mean, it's very rare, um, Tim, for anyone to be able to get a an Aston Martin that's that's featured in a Bond film. Um, obviously, we mentioned the the um, the, the DB5 that sold for 1.9 million, I believe. Yeah. I mean that is a lot of money, but it's you, it's very rare to get a Bond car going under the hammer. Um, 
It is. You know, we, 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 we know that they have been out there, um, even cars from the Connery era. Sure. Um, the GoldenEye car kind of represented a, a multiple of three stroke four times the price then of what a, a similar condition standard car would fetch. Sure, sure. Um, the Mercury Cougar was, I think, around the 350 mark. It was about half a million dollars. Wow, um, okay. Now, for that same spec car in the States, without the history, they're about $100,000 max. Oh, wow, okay. So that was a multiple of five. Sure. But I suppose the, the, the quirky fact to this is so many of the cars that we've handled in the past have been acquired by the production company, go and do the movie, and then they get filtered out through either the dealer network, which mm. certainly happened on a number of the vanquishes from the Pierce Brosnan era of films. Mm -hmm. They were kind of taken, some of the, uh, some of the buttons and knobs, et cetera, were taken off the cars and they were just washed through wow. the, the dealer network. And we've handled a couple of, we handled two or three of those cars. Oh, right, okay. Um, so what's interesting about this one is it's the other way around. This actually was a car that, that had to be acquired from the then owner to then be used and then he got it back again, rather than the production company acquired the car direct from the factory and sure. then it was, it, it, it was sold. But it's got, I love the, the provenance. Now, I mean, as a car, it's, I mean, just lovely to just drive off. And I mean, it's 715 horsepower. brake horsepower, 5.2 litre twin turbo V12 engine. I mean, the Aston, the old Aston V12 was, you know, was a masterpiece. This has got the poke to, I mean, it's a supercar but in the Grand Tourer's body. It's something that could be usable every day. We actually did film a, um, a, another DBS. We did a, um, went to an advanced screening in No Time To Die and they, were, they had a, one of the Goldfinger Aston DB5s there with all the gadgets and we had, uh, had a go in, the, in, a, in another DBS, which is absolutely sensational. But a usable car, I mean, it's, yeah, it's uh, obviously dripping with sex appeal. <laughs> But there's also an extra little bonus, a little, little, uh, little extra bond nod with this particular car. Can we pop the hood? Because it's actually been signed off by somebody rather special. Yeah, you've got a little pull just in, uh, in the footwell on that side. OK, and, let's have a look. Um, I've got one on this side too. OK. So look at this, guys. This is so cool. If you want to come, come around here, Gavin, and if you can get a good shot of that. But that's the DBS hand-built in England, and it's been... Uh, Final inspection by your friend and mine, Daniel Craig. There we go. Now, what's the estimate for, for this car, Tim? Um, for between four and five hundred thousand pounds. But for a slice of Bond history, I think that would be an absolute steal if you've got the got the readies. Now, we talked about um, the, the DB5, the GoldenEye DB5, and at the same time as that auction in, back in uh, 2018, one of the Defenders, the SVX Defenders, was sold. We've got one of the sister cars here up yep. for grabs. Can we have a quick look at that? Oh, absolutely. Let's come around, come around. Now, this is an absolute beast. <laughs> now, these do pop up for auction. There were 10 made, is that right? Or yep. 10 made for auction? 10, 10 made. I think, I think three were written off. Uh huh. Um, so, so, so legend has it now. Um, and you're right, we had a sister car in 2018. Um, one or two had been sold at auction leading up to our, our sale in 2018. That car, I think, ended up selling for around the £360,000 mark. One of our underbidders um, then found this car uh, within a, a short period of time um, mm -hmm. and acquired it. And um, I, I don't think the car's done many miles at all. Uh, it's just gone in for an MOT, which has passed. And it's, uh, so this car's back with us. Yes, they're one of seven now. Um, and 150 to 200,000 pounds. Oh, wow. Is, is, is the, what we say, won't be a come and get me, maybe. I, seriously, I reckon it's gonna, it's gonna sail past that. I mean, it's just epically, these wheels, 37 inch wheels, okay. The bolts around this, the, 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 the tire has to be bolted onto the actual wheel itself. And the, look at the tread depth here. Basically, the stunt coordinators of the film went to Bola, didn't they? Bola, who make the, the Wildcat, the Nemesis, um, and the Tomcat originally, which are all based on the, on the original um, Defender. But the, 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 the stunt coordinators once wanted a car that could be bashed around in, in Austria for that scene when Daniel Craig is in the plane chasing after Lea Seydoux, who's been taken by Hinks in the, 
in the def uh, in there are two defenders, aren't there? I think and a Range Rover and a Range Rover Sport, I think, or yeah, and they're careering down the hill, but they needed a car that could be hit by a plane, do a couple of rolls. I mean, and the snow and the, the treads here are so designed so that the the, the, the tire would sink into the actual snow, but the cleats here would actually grip on the, on the... So it's brilliant on snow, brilliant on mud as well, but I don't think it's very hot on, on tarmac. I don't right. think... You, well, you know, you know your wheels and tyres, Blair, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm great at parties. Yeah, they really love me. Um, there is actually... Um, we, we, we highlighted uh, the certificate from Aston, but there's also just in the, in, in the trunk of this vehicle... Let's have a look, let's got, have a look. Oh, wow, it's a two-man job, I think. It. Do you want to take one side? There we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, and it's got the number plate as well. Look, the Austrian number so, plate. So yeah, you've got the call sheet and, um, and obviously some of the, some of the famous scenes-ish. Oh, that's so cool. But um, I mean, what a slice of history. And it's, I mean, this thing will go absolutely anywhere. Should we pop that back? Yeah. Um, the, um, you can see the, the size of the tires. This will go anywhere. You can actually lower the tire pressure really low. I mean, it goes down to 10 psi if you want to. I think most, when you're standard, you see sort of 15 psi, but they actually have to build it. You can see if you hit, look and see here, you've got um, the, the tires have such an intrusion because they're so articulated. They can go um, over absolutely anything. The roll cage as well is amazing. There's a roll cage on the inside, which we'll look at in a minute, but the roll cage is bolted on inside and out and it's got these amazing lights on the front we'll have a look at it in a minute but it's just a, it's a 2.2 litre diesel if memory serves but it's been tweaked quite seriously by bowler um they up, ramp up the torque as well so it can really kind of assault any any mountain um should we have a quick look inside is that cool absolutely let's have a look i'll pop around the other side gav now when you first get in it does feel like a fairly standard defender but when you look around, suddenly you see little bits and pieces that tell you this is something very, very special. The first thing, obviously, these seats, Tim, where we're sitting in, they're like Recaros. They're, I think they're specific for the SVX, am I right? Oh, they are Recaros, yeah. yeah. And they've got, um, they've got uh, FIA spec kind of uh, four-point harnesses to keep the older stunt guys um, str nicely strapped in. You can see the, the roll cage is continued on the inside. You can see there are holes in the roof here where it's actually bolted to the... Bolted through. Bolted through to the roll cage on top to make sure it's absolutely <laughs> bulletproof if it, when it goes into a roll potentially. There are some really cool features as well. Uh, there would have been a hydraulic um, handbrake here so they could kick the back out when they wanted to. Um, there are some very ominous looking red buttons. What are these? I think one's a fire, the fire system, isn't it? What, what, one's, one's an electric cut off. Uh -huh. um, so it's electric on, electric off. Um, and that will be your fire. We've got a fire extinguisher um, in the oh, rear yeah. passenger footwell. Um, so that's just so that'll be for engine fires, obviously. And we've got hosing that, that goes up through the bulkhead and into the engine compartment. So if you see, see smoke, you can, you know, <laughs> you don't have to run. You can just press the button and keep going. These buttons here, I think, are really fun as well. I mean, you've got two, two kangaroos. That's for the spotlights, the spotlights on top. That's cool. They're kind of what do they call them in Australia? They're like rue. Well, you have rue bars. Don't rue bar you? But, oh, rue uh, bars, but, but they're, but they're not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm being Australian. I don't know. But, uh. <laughs> but I've heard that these the lights on top here are like just super candles. You know, they will you know basically turn night into day. Um, it is. I mean, we we had the ignition on a few seconds ago. And it's only done 486 miles, which is just absolutely crazy. But it's a, you know it's 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 livable in. You can have loads of fun with this. I think. Um, and the estimate was, you said, 150? 150 to 200,000. I mean, for a slice of Bond history, I think that's an absolute bargain. And you can see as well down here, you know it's one of the legitimate, because um, I know there are a few few fakes out there at one yep. point. Yep. You can tell this is an absolute, uh, genuine, legitimate one, because it's got a special projects SVS, uh, SVX concept for off-road use only down there. Is there anything else in the car that we can talk about? I think we've, you know... I think we can. We've, I think you've, you've probably now that there, there is some... There's some nice sort of period damage in the um, in, in, in the in the rear, which is obviously from scratches and use from from filming and moving things backwards and forwards. Um, I suppose the only other, uh, having spoken to a, an, a, another client that has got one of these vehicles, the only thing you really ought to just make sure will happen when you do acquire this or before you acquire this is make sure it fits in your garage oh, because yeah. they are uh, well, as you know, from being sat here and or, or have to climb into it. Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're big and um, headroom is an issue. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, 
it's just, I mean, but it ticks all the boxes if you're in a kind of adventure or you're an off-road. I mean, it's got, I, mean, I love the rope, the actual rope on the front doesn't actually do, it's just for cosmetics, isn't it? It doesn't actually do anything, but it just looks cool. It looks, pop, yeah. it looks And the winch on the front, if we'll have a look at a shot of that in a minute, but the winch on the front does 10,000 pounds. That's like, how many tons is that? It's like It'll pull four another and a half, one of these. another one, exactly, <laughs> another four and a half tons you can winch out of, out of trouble. But that's brilliant. Now look, what we're going to do now is we're going to hop out and we're going to have a quick because I'd love to ask you, I mean, there are a few other cars which, if your budget can't stretch to the £500,000 for Nomi's uh, DB, uh, DBS or even one hundred fifty to 200000 for this, there are a few kind of Bondian cars which might be more kind of approachable in terms of, uh, in terms of your wallet. Let's have a quick look now. So look, at the, if your pockets really can't stretch to Nomi's DBS, we could start here, I suppose. I mean, how much are we looking at for one of the, the cars here? Uh, the Charles cars, they range from anywhere from 1,000 up to, can be 15 or 20,000 pounds. 20,000 pounds? Not or, all of them, not no, all of them. No, I mean, eventually they can end up at that price if sure. two people oh, fight for Oh, there's a bidding war going on. Them. And that has happened in the past. Which are the most collectible ones we're looking at here? Because um, I'm not an expert. So. Uh, so sometimes the Bugattis are, uh -huh. uh, and then it's obviously whatever just appeals to a collector and is missing in their, in their link. Obviously mm -hmm. the J40 pedal cars, are collectible because here at Goodwood in revival time September, there's a Setrington Cup, which is a race, a pedal car race for, for the kids. Oh, um, cool. I've been lucky, stroke unlucky, to have my son do it on two or three occasions. He loves it for the chocolate <laughs> and the race overalls. Uh, and he didn't quite come last. He came second to last oh, um, when he did it. But I put that down to um, uh, the obviously the mechanic and the uh, how the car was set not up, set up and looked after. That Oil on my, the track as that well. That was my colleague Malcolm Barber's car that we borrowed, so uh, it was his fault. Malcolm, Malcolm, Ma your fault, Malcolm. This is a Bond car potentially here. We could talk about it very quickly because it's a it's an, an Aston Martin DB DB Mark III. DB Mark III. So this was in the books. Wasn't in the it? books, yes, it was. So he he I think he progressed from a Bentley um, from a three and a half or four and a quarter, four and a quarter Derby Bentley. We call them Derby Bentleys because they were made in Derby at mm -hmm. the time, but effectively that's pre-war, but mid to late thirties, um, into an Aston Martin and into one of these, which is a DB Mark III. Wow. I mean, uh, but this one's quite rare because it's left-hand drive with a sunroof. I don't think the sunroof was factory, but left-hand drive, they made far few left-hand drive cars back in the day. And of course the market for left-hand drive is far bigger sure, now. Sure, sure. So, you will generally see a 30% increase in uplift in price for a left-hand drive over a right-hand drive car. And are you expecting lots of lots of bidding from overseas? I mean, just before I go, in, go any further, we'll put loads of links down so if people want to look at the catalogues and so on and so forth, but do you get a lot of bidders, you know, bidding from overseas? Obviously, this would be a huge mark, as you say, for, for a left-hand drive car of this, of this rarity. Uh, yes, we do. We are, we are an international outfit. Um, we have motoring departments in all, all the major corners um, of, of the motor car collecting sort of fraternity, mm -hmm. uh, East Coast, West Coast of the States and mainland Europe, etc. Sure. Um, but yeah, I would say out of the interest that uh, this car's generated, it's all been be it continental Europe and the States. Okay, sure, sure, sure. It was a US car from new, so they do you know, American buyers and collectors do like to, you know, it's come from the States. I know mm -hmm. it was a UK built car, but it's come from the States. It's going to go back. And it was a Kevin K restored car as well. So mm -hmm. it was restored by a very good name out in the States prior to our buyer purchasing it 10, 12 years ago in the US. And what's the, uh, what's the, what's the, um, the estimate for this one? Uh, the guy price on this one is somewhere between 150 and 200,000. Wow. Now this is the one that caught my eye in the, in the catalog because it's a kind of, melange of you know you've got the, the kind of silver paint but you've got the the timothy dalton kind of era aston v8 but also it was used in no time to die but it's it's the, the actual list price the guide price is actually dare i say it you know it's you know sort of within budget can Excellent. you talk us through the actual spec of the car well first of all blair we must get you registered for the sale <laughs> yes. uh, on, on friday yeah um uh, it's a series 5 v8 uh, which were, therefore means fuel injected, and most of them were uh, automatic transmission. Um, what denotes a Series 5 car over a lot of the other later V8s is that smoother bonnet line, so you haven't got the, the raised um, stack, which obviously would be hiding underneath the carburettors, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, we call it the love muscle, um, <laughs> but uh, it's not particularly PC. It it's bond, it a, it's all right, it's, that's yeah. fine. Uh, but it, 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 they are a very manly looking car. Um, and yeah, this has got a guy price of 65, 
65, 75, 85,000 pounds or something like that. Worth, um, worth every penny, my word. And one thing I didn't mention actually uh -huh. on the DB Mark III, that is to be sold. So it is here without reserve. So if, if somebody's lucky to put their hand up and it's only 100,000 pounds, not 150, they, they could be buying it. Crikey. Now, let's move along because if you're not necessarily um, into your Astons, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't be, but if you want to kind of have another Bond feeling car, this, this might give you the, the tingles because it's a bit like Tanya Mallet's Mustang um, used in the chase with, with, with Connery's um, Aston Martin DB5. In this is quite a special finger. car, in yeah, Goldfinger, yeah, yeah. This is quite a special car as well, isn't it? Because it's got an uprated suspension and engine and... Yeah, it's, 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 it's uh, what, what they call a K-code um, Mustang. And we've got a manual gearbox, so it's four on the floor rather than three on the tree, um, <laughs> as, as, as the, my, my US colleagues would, uh, would denote. Um, and, and 289, 289 power, so same motor that would be in 289 Cobras. <gasps> Um, Whoa. Is is sort of shoehorned here. Actually, plenty of space. Plenty of um, space in, and plenty into, of in, Into uh, the underbonnet of the Mustang. Very cool car. And room for the room in the back for you know. Uh, a good four seater. There yeah. aren't many. There aren't many great four seater collectible classic convertibles out there. You think of maybe a 280 SE 3.5 convertible Mercedes. Yeah, Merc, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and there's not many of them. No, um, I mean this is 30, 30 to 30 to 50 thousand um, for the Mustang. Brilliant. Now, we're going to quickly chat about the, the Vanquish because that caught my eye as well. I know a lot of you guys out there are Brosnan fans. This could be a way into a, a Brosnan era Aston. Um, it's low mileage. It's in the right color. It's got the plus two seating you mentioned before to me privately. I mean, it's, so if you want to, you know, you can, wet, you can put your kids in, albeit they'd have to be very small, small kids. Uh, any any more details on the spec of the car that we should be looking at? I mean, it's no, I mean it, it hasn't been modified. Some some uh, some owners decided that they would get rid of the flappy paddles and, and um, have the factory convert to manual, which was at the time fifteen thousand. Now I believe it's thirty. Mm -hmm. um, but it was designed as a flappy paddle shift uh, motor car, and yep. um, that's the way the collectors now turn it around and want it to be. Sure. Um, as you say, it's 25,000 miles, I think. It has been serviced on regular intervals. It's been serviced up at works and I think Hatfields. Um, guide price is around the 50 to 60,000 pound mark. It's, oh, it's the paintwork. It's just glowing. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning, stunning piece of kit. Right, next door we've got uh, um, so, so back on the theme, uh, it's a later Aston to the, the, the Connery DB5, mm -hmm. but if you paint it silver birch um, for half the money, um, you're into an Aston Martin DB6. This is a Mark II, mm -hmm. a manual box Mark II. And um, this car is no reserve and is around the one, yeah, 150 to 200,000 pound mark. Whoa. And they're probably better to drive than a DB5, maybe? I don't know. Are um, some of the wrinkles? Or it, it... I mean, they're not a, to me, I've never found them to be a sports car. They're a GT car. Sure. So if you've got power steering, which a lot of these cars were supplied with power steering from new. Mm -hmm. You've got a good set of brakes on there. Even an automatic gearbox with the internals changed, maybe by a chap called White House, and you've mm -hmm. got sort of four speed. So power steering, it's very much like driving a modern motor car. Yeah. And um, you know, they're not out and out, and out sports cars. No, sure. Uh, that, because they are quite heavy. They're quite a big and quite a heavy motor car. But um, a nice place to be. My dad had a DB6 Mark II, like, like this one in Seychelles Blue, I think it was. But it had electric windows as well. You think you don't equate having electric windows with a, with a sort of classic Aston, but, but there you go, beautiful car. Now, just moving on, there's an, another Bond era car here, in fact. Um, and for Laser Me fans, this could be a winner for you as well because it's a 1970, not a 1969, but 1970 DBS. Now it's a V8. Now the one they used in the film was a V6, I believe. But it was they, a six-cylinder. Six-cylinder, six-cylinder. Yeah, so that, six that, 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 was, that was a DBS six Vantage um, that was in olive uh, color scheme. And yes, that was Laser Me's car. Um, obviously, the, the final scene in the movie. I'm not going to mention what happened because I don't want to spoil Spoiler it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but, uh, but this is, for all intents and purposes, identical in what you see on the exterior. It's got the what, what, what the trade term a chip cutter grill. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got that sort of beg box grill shape with the quad headlamps. Um, and I think a very pretty nose to the car than the single headlamp V8s, mm -hmm. which then came around, uh, came around a year or two later in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. um, this car has been restored by its previous owner that owned it for 30, 35 years. 
a chap called Tony Christie. Manual car, um, so V8 power, manual and um, fuel injectors as well. Beautiful. I mean, these are ultra cool cars now, I, I really think. Now, there's one more car I want to pick out, which we have to walk, do a quick walk to, because it's actually not a Bond car, but it's got a Bond connection. So this car has a, well, it's got a Bond provenance, Bond history, I think, because it's an old Bentley. What's special about this particular car, Tim? Well, th this, what's special about this particular car is it's one of four cars that we're selling for the late Peter Blonde, um, oh, wow. who was a historic racer. Um, and he was actually a, a, one of the directors of Sotheby's, but um, oh, wow. he, he, was, he, he was a very good, uh, uh, he was a very good friend of the motoring department at Bonhams. And um, so uh, the family have entrusted us with the sale of his, his four motor cars, of which there are two or three Rolls Royces and one Derby Bentley. But the Bond link, I mean, it's tenuous, but the Bond link is that James Bond in Ian Fleming's books, he drove a, a four and a quarter litre Derby Bentley. Um, and if those people remember the other Bond movie that wasn't sanctioned, which was Never Say so Never, Never Again, Again yeah. um, where Sean Connery reappeared, um, he's seen in a Derby Bentley. Um, that's a Gurney Nutting, I seem to recall, a Gurney Nutting three position drop eggs. So we sold that car twice. Oh, wow. Um, uh, so that, yeah, that, that was another Bentley link and a nod to the Fleming books. But this is a four and a quarter um, litre Derby Bentley, um, Vanden Pla four seat all weather tour of coach work really elegant really lovely um, to be sold again without reserve and estimate on this car is between 120 and 150. wow i mean they love the patina i mean the woodwork it's, it's just immaculate yeah, you know there are things on here that you wouldn't really want to change in, in my opinion i mean i've only been doing this job for nearly 30 years and the fact that the seats show age and wear it's 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 like an old chest an interior of a car i find is like an old chesterfield sofa it's like an old pair of trusty brogues or something you you wouldn't want to chop and change everything and make it new make everything new because it just loses soul absolutely it's it's just showing it's showing its history in its heart and its sleeve wonderful absolutely wonderful so Looking around here, Tim, if money was no object, blank check, where would you put your money on Friday sale? Well, you've only just met me, and you probably think it's the, it's the Lamborghini Aventador uh, Miura homage, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, my, my son would love me. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a big love ghost it. for me, but it's, a, yeah, it's definitely my son's <laughs> kind of like bag but as no, well. Uh, I, I'm, I'm split. Um, I'm split, really, on where, where my seven or eight hundred thousand pounds would go. Um, it's either the DB4 convertible, so it's one of 70. This has been with a current owner since 1980. Uh -huh. um, it has had a color change, so red wasn't its original color, and arguably you go back to its original color, which is far more pleasing, but people like red, that's fine. It's got a factory hard top. It went back to the factory. Its first owner was a chap called Peter Hall, who then became Sir Peter Hall. RSC. Uh, RSC, yes. that's right. Um, and it was delivered to the Royal Shakespeare Company. Um, upgrades on the carburettors, hard top, bolted on, and, and a few other little sensible upgrades. There's a bigger ashtray for his pipe. Oh, nice little touches <laughs> like that. Nice little touches like that. But it's a very, very rare car. I mean, they made less four convertibles than the DB4 GT. And DB4 GTs today are Lots 250, 300,000 pounds. But I, I have a passion for pre-war motor cars. Oh, right. And um, the car that from a condition perspective, and also a car that you can now do so many events in, is the Fraser Nash BMW 328 Roadster. Now this is one of 50 or so that were constructed in right-hand drive and were sold through AFN um, as Fraser Nash's um, back in the late 30s. And this car has had a two-year nut and bolt restoration by Thornley Kellum, that was finished in 2017. Its current owner bought this car in 1950 when Whoa. he was 21. Whoa. Um, he had the work done. It then won the City Concours um, in 2017 and it's still running in, in terms of miles. But this is a car that is your entry for an inordinate amount of... Emilia Well, just a huge number. And today, today our market is, is driven, pardon the pun, but it is driven with lots of events and being able to go and take your um, your partner with you and go and do some great road rallies, seeing some wonderful parts of the English countryside, Scottish countryside or further afield. 
and uh, with rally clocks in there, you can stay in some great hotels, you eat well, you drink well, at night obviously no drink driving. <laughs> sure. um, but 328 Roadster, I mean typically Germanic in their build quality, you sit in the car rather than on the car, it's so comfortable, um, they're way ahead of their time. It's absolutely immaculate, I mean I love the interior, it's just beautiful, the white dials, the red leather, I totally get why this would be your car. For me, I think if, you know, even with an unlimited budget, I still love that, that kind of silver Series 5 uh, V8. It was just beautiful. Now look, if you liked this video, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications so that uh, you'll be alerted when the next video drops. But for now, I'd love to say a huge thank you to Tim. Thanks so much for your time, sir. What a legend. Um, but for now, this has been Tim and Blair Ballard for the Bon Vivant. Bidding you a very bon farewell. Stay safe, friends. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons. Do turn on notifications so you know when the next video drops. Also, leave some comments down below as to any videos you'd like to see in the future. But for now, stay safe, friends. We'll see you next time.